What are the worlds beyond our galaxy like? The universe that surrounds us has not yet revealed its limits. If we now know the borders of our galaxy, the Milky Way, our contemporary measuring instruments are not able to say whether the cosmos is unlimited or not. However, at present, the observable part of the universe seems to represent a sphere of 93 billion light-years in diameter. It is estimated that the cosmological horizon is about 45 billion light-years from Earth. Nevertheless, the light emitted by distant objects is gradually reaching us. This hypothetical boundary is therefore dynamic, and the observable universe is getting longer over time. Scientists who have long considered our galaxy to be the center of the universe now know that this is not the case. They have long understood that our sun is only one star among many others. Moreover, they have been able to establish that our galaxy represents only a tiny part of the cosmic immensity, despite its dimensions, at our human size somewhat astronomical. Indeed, our galaxy alone measures nearly a hundred thousand light years in length and a thousand light years in thickness. On the scale of the universe which counts trillions of galaxies, it represents only a grain of sand in the desert. The Milky Way, because our solar system is part of it, and therefore includes the objects closest to us, accumulates a considerable amount of studies and observations. If it has given us many of its secrets, it is obvious that new elements will be uncovered as technologies progress. But do you think you know everything about our galaxy? Do you have any idea of what surrounds it? Do you think that in a side real space millions or even billions of light years away, the stars then present behave differently? Dear Traveler, welcome. Today we are going to explore the borders of our Milky Way. We will have the opportunity to visit galaxies that are very different from each other. During our journey, we will probably witness exceptional cosmic events of rare beauty we will discover lost and lacunar zones of space, stellar or planetary objects like we have never encountered before. Far from our beautiful Earth, we will try to understand the workings of the universe. But before we start our interstellar adventure, don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Thank you, and have a nice trip! Before we begin our journey to the far reaches of the Milky Way, I'd like to share with you several surprising facts about it. You may already know some of them, or you may be surprised to learn them. To begin with, do you know how old our galaxy is? For a long time, it was thought to be a very old lady, 13.5 billion years old, barely younger than the hot and dense phase of the history of the universe, the famous Big Bang, which would have taken place 13.8 billion years ago. However, the age of the oldest structure of our galaxy, namely its thick disk, has been revised downwards in 2021. Using data from the Kepler Space Telescope, a group of scientists were able to measure the wobbles of stars in this part of the Milky Way. Using a method called Asteroseismology, they measured the oscillations of the stars in relation to their internal tremors. These tremors generate sound waves inside the stars that make them ring or vibrate. The frequencies produced tell scientists about the internal properties of the stars, and they can then deduce their age. According to their latest estimates, the thick disk of the Milky Way 
is no longer 13.5 billion years old, but 13 billion years old. That is, it would have appeared 800 million years after the Big Bang. Despite its birth so long ago, our galaxy is not eternal. It is destined within 4 billion years to collide with its nearest neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy. Indeed, these two galactic monsters are approaching each other at the incredible speed of more than 400,000 kilometers per hour, or 250,000 miles per hour. Despite appearances, the meeting of these two spiral galaxies will be smooth. Some stars will probably be destroyed, but overall, these two galaxies will only come together to form one. Imagine then the magnificent starry sky that this new mega galaxy could offer us. Meanwhile, our Milky Way continues to surprise the scientific community. Astronomers have discovered in 2010 that it rejects massive bubbles of gas on both sides of its center. These gas bubbles of extreme heat are called Fermi bubbles. They are radiating structures in the shape of eight, oriented perpendicular to the galactic disk. For the time being, we do not yet know what they correspond to exactly. Some say that because they are perfectly symmetrical, they have a direct link with the galactic center. Is it a manifestation of the death of a star in the region of Sagittarius A, the giant black hole of our galaxy? The Milky Way evolves in the universe in the middle of an incalculable quantity of stars. However, it has been established that it is part of a group of galaxies known as the Local Group. This group contains more than 60 galaxies, mainly dwarf galaxies, all linked by common gravitational forces. However, this local group is only a small part of an even larger cluster of galaxies, the Virgo supercluster, of which it is located on the periphery. This supercluster includes at least 100 groups and clusters of galaxies and could be nearly 200 million light years in diameter. It belongs to an even more gigantic structure, the Laniakea supercluster. The latter, composed of more than 100,000 galaxies and extending over 520 million light years, has not convinced all scientists. Indeed, some think that the galaxies of this last structure are not gravitationally bound, and consequently, these subgroups should disperse with time. But let us return to the local group. Despite its small size, it is a well-stocked catalog. It includes almost all types of galaxies, except the giant elliptical galaxies, which cannot be present in such a small structure if we can say so, compared to our human size. The size of the local group is approximately 10 million light years in diameter, and its total mass is estimated at 2300 billion solar masses. The galaxies furthest from our solar system are about 5 million light years away. If it hosts mainly dwarf galaxies, it is the host of three large and massive galaxies, namely the Andromeda Galaxy, which is probably the largest, the Triangulum Galaxy, which is the smallest, and of course, our galaxy. The two main members of this group, namely the Andromeda Galaxy and our Milky Way, are surrounded by satellite galaxies, more or less numerous. But not all galaxies in the local group are associated with a host galaxy. Some of them seem to follow their own path. We will discover them later. However, they are all linked to the gravitational center of the local group, which is located somewhere between the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy.
Thus, there are hundreds of billions of stars that populate our Milky Way. It is estimated that there are between 200 and 400 billion. More than 100 billion planets would evolve in this grandiose cluster, whose diameter is estimated between 100,000 and 200,000 light years. If the majority of stars are located in the center of the cluster, they are less and less numerous beyond 120,000 light years. But where does the Milky Way end? What is there in its periphery? Is it just a mixture of interstellar gas drowning in intergalactic space? Or are there other as yet undetected objects? As you know, the Milky Way is accompanied by satellite galaxies. If at the beginning of the century it was thought that it had only a dozen companion galaxies, since then, about 50 other galaxies have been identified. But experts agree that about 150 galaxies have yet to be discovered in the Milky Way's orbit. With technological advances, new galactic objects are regularly unveiled, especially since today we are able to observe some distant or faint objects thanks to space programs such as, for example, the Gaia mission. Among the famous satellite galaxies of the Milky Way, two of them are small galaxies. The Large Magellanic Cloud, 14,000 light years in diameter, and its traveling companion, the Small Magellanic Cloud, with which it is connected by a bridge composed of neutral atomic hydrogen gas. This is the famous Magellanic Bridge. The other galaxies that orbit around ours are mainly dwarf galaxies. The best known are the Great Dog, the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, the Little Dipper, the Sculptor Dwarf Galaxy, the Sextant Dwarf Galaxy, the Furnace Dwarf Galaxy, and Leo 1. Very small galaxies like the Carina Dwarf Galaxy, the Dragon Dwarf Galaxy, or Leo 2 are not more than 500 light years. If these galaxies have remained in the shadows for a long time, it is because they are masked by a black halo. The Milky Way is indeed surrounded by a halo that, like a bubble, envelops it on both sides. It extends over hundreds of thousands of light years, well beyond the stellar halo until it almost reaches the Magellanic Clouds. In reality, when we mention the diameter of our galaxy, which is estimated at 100,000 light years, we are talking about the galactic disk. This is the densest part, where gas, dust, and stars with their respective planets are massively concentrated. On the other hand, if we take into account this periphery, certainly much less dense and populated, then our galactic park sees its borders pushed back to 520,000 light years. But what can be found in this dark looking halo? It is actually composed of a large amount of hot gas with an estimated temperature between 1 and 2.5 million degrees Celsius, or 1.8 and 4.5 million degrees Fahrenheit. It weighs almost as much as the Milky Way. This cluster of dark matter seems to play an important role in the close environment of the Milky Way. It keeps the satellite galaxies in orbit around their host, preventing them from drifting away into the cosmos. But what if it does more than just hold the star clusters at its periphery? Could it be, as many astronomers have suggested, that some of the stars in our galaxy have been stolen from a neighboring galaxy? It could be that nearly half of the stars orbiting at the outer edge of the Milky Way come from the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. Indeed, the latter, which was long considered the closest galaxy to our galaxy, 
Before being overtaken by the dwarf galaxy of the Great Dog, or Canis Major, has made several orbits around our Milky Way. At each of its passages, its proximity would have subjected it to the strong gravity of our galaxy, which would then have robbed it of a large quantity of stars. During simulations, astronomers were able to conclude that over time, the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy would have lost nearly a third of its stars and nine-tenths of its dark matter to the Milky Way. But the shredding work is not over. Five stars from this dwarf galaxy may well come to settle in our Milky Way as well, coinciding with five of the most distant stars in our galaxy. The Milky Way's disk does not emerge unscathed from these intergalactic interactions. In spite of an imperturbable appearance, it is also strongly impacted by its neighborhood. This was demonstrated by two astronomers from the University of Edinburgh in 2020. The Large Magellanic Cloud, which is the most massive satellite galaxy of our Milky Way, with a mass equivalent to a tenth of that of our galaxy, would have violently distorted our galactic disk. Due to important gravitational perturbations during a passage dating from about 700 million years ago, the disk of the Milky Way would have kept the stigma of this close passage. This is why it appears to be pulled and twisted at a speed of nearly 32 kilometers per second, or 20 miles per second, in the direction of the constellation Pegasus. A second galaxy is responsible for the ripples that can be seen, mainly on the edges of our Milky Way. This is, of course, the dwarf spheroidal galaxy of Sagittarius, one of the closest satellites of our galaxy. Moreover, this galaxy, although tiny compared to other galactic monsters, may even be the origin of the formation of our Sun. Indeed, some galaxies are bound to collide with each other. The impact, if it is not explosive, generates, however, chain reactions and progressive transformations that can sometimes radically change one or both objects. In this particular case, the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy has rubbed a little too close to our Milky Way six billion years ago. This close encounter probably happened several times. In addition to causing the ripples of many stars on the outer edge of the Milky Way, it probably triggered the period of star formation that gave rise to our Sun. If the incessant ballet of galactic monsters leaves indelible traces, what about other galactic objects? According to some scientists, an extremely violent crash probably occurred in the local group six billion years ago, leading to the birth of the Andromeda Galaxy. A group of researchers has modeled the evolution and structure of this galactic monster. They have succeeded in reproducing all the exceptional properties of this star, namely, a large thin disk and its giant gas ring a massive central bulge, a colossal thick disk, an immense stream of old stars, accompanied by numerous streams of luminous stars in its peripheral halo. Their conclusion is unequivocal. Andromeda is the result of a merger between two galaxies, one a little more massive than our Milky Way, the other three times less important. Their first meeting dates back to less than 9 billion years ago, and finally became one 5.5 billion years ago. The collision is certainly the most important that the local group has ever known, especially since this galaxy and its satellites contain most of the visible baryonic matter, stars and gas of the group. According to their numerical simulations, the collision that preceded the merger must have been very violent, otherwise the reformation of the disk of the new galaxy 
could not have occurred after the shock. During this confrontation, a mass composed of gas and stars, corresponding to a third of that of the Milky Way, was expelled into space, forming by the force of gravity, tidal tails which then dispersed to end up along the disk of the final galaxy. The study in question goes well beyond these conclusions. A hypothesis has emerged concerning the origin of the Magellanic Clouds. They could have been created in one of the tidal tails caused by this historic collision before being ejected in the direction of our Milky Way. This idea is based on the fact that the Magellanic Clouds are, in addition to their irregular shape, rich in gas, just like the tidal tails. These results are quite interesting, in the sense that, on the one hand, they confirm that spiral galaxies were formed during successive mergers, and on the other hand, that dwarf galaxies were created from tidal tails. But here again, a new enigma arises. Many dwarf galaxies do not seem to belong to a host galaxy. What if we went to see them more closely? I now propose to visit other members of the local group, especially those that are loners and are not associated with any other galactic object apart from their main host. Let's go to the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, which is an irregular galaxy located in the constellation Sagittarius. This one is very different from the famous spheroidal dwarf Sagittarius Galaxy, which has long been considered the closest galactic satellite to our Milky Way. The irregular dwarf Sagittarius Galaxy is about 4.2 million light years away from our Sun. The discovery of this galactic object dates back to 1977. It was highlighted on a photographic plate taken for the creation of the Atlas of the European Southern Observatory in La Silla, northern Chile. This picture was possible thanks to the Schmidt telescope, whose two mirrors are respectively 1.62 meters, or 5.2 feet, and 1 meter, or 3 feet, in diameter. Its position in the cosmos, slightly outside the zero-velocity surface of the local group, places it at such a great distance from the very center of the latter that it appears to be the most eccentric galaxy of all. Much more luminous than the dwarf Aquarius galaxy, for example, it attests to have experienced a long period of star formation. Indeed, it contains a large population of stars of intermediate age. Among the many stars that sparkle, 27 so-called carbon stars have been identified. These stars, giant and cold, and moreover, at the end of their life, have an atmosphere containing an unusually high quantity of carbon due to convection movements. This carbon by absorbing short wavelengths is responsible for the red color of the star. However, the stars of this galaxy are, for the most part, relatively young on the scale of the universe, with an age between 4 and 8 billion years. But the majority of the stars that compose it are poor in metals, with an iron metallicity index lower than 1.3. As you can see, the irregular dwarf galaxy of Sagittarius is so qualified because no precise shape can be attributed to it. But what interests us most about it, apart from the fact that it evolves independently on the periphery of the local group, is the magnificent image it offered in 2003 to the Hubble Space Telescope. The latter fortuitously captured the trail of an asteroid that was drifting in this region of space, alongside the galaxy then observed. One can admire on this capture 13 reddish arcs, which like train cars following one another, mark the path of this asteroid, thus immortalized. 
about 2.15 million light years away from the Milky Way in the constellation of Cassiopeia, an irregular dwarf galaxy named IC10 has also made the news. This galaxy, which was discovered by the astronomer Lewis Swift in 1889, has long been considered as a faint star in a very large nebulosity, itself extremely faint and diffuse. However, if another scientist suggested in 1935 that it was a galaxy of the local group, it was in the 1960s that it was recognized as such by Edwin Hubble because of a radial velocity estimated at 350 kilometers per second or 220 miles per second, demonstrating that this galactic object is approaching us. Consequently, it is indeed part of the local group. Although the IC10 galaxy is not so far from us, it is not the easiest galaxy to study because it is hidden behind a certain amount of dust and stars. Indeed, it is close to the plane of our own galactic disk. Its luminosity can be compared to that of the small Magellanic Cloud, although it is smaller, measuring only 5,000 light years in diameter. The intermediate interstellar medium that separates us from it inevitably absorbs some of its radiation. However, if its light is attenuated, its careful observation allows us to affirm that it has a large population of young stars and that it shelters no less than 27 planetary nebulae. From the arrangement of these nebulae, one may wonder if the galaxy is not larger than it appears. The observation of IC10 also leads to the conclusion that it is still active. Indeed, we can observe some regions where star formation is common. These stars with a reddish glow appear vigorous, and for good reason. IC10 is what we call a starburst galaxy. It is the closest known galaxy of this type to our Milky Way. Thus, it experiences bursts of star formation. It has an average of 5.1 stars per kiloparsec, which is much more hot, wolf riot stars per square kiloparsec, than the Magellanic clouds combined. Its metal content, slightly higher than that of the small Magellanic cloud, shows that it has known, on the other hand, a much longer period of star formation activity. This is why we can find many generations of stars, more or less young. Moreover, the activity which reigns there still allows, at the present time, the formation of approximately 0.04 to 0.08 solar mass per year. The huge envelope of interstellar gas surrounding this galaxy provides enough to maintain this activity for a few more billion years. The huge hydrogen bubble that surrounds IC10, 10 times larger in visible light than its galaxy, has a particularity. Indeed, its rotational motion does not follow that of the galaxy itself. Although obviously linked, these two elements seem to evolve independently, with reversed rotations. Could this be due to the distance of this galaxy from the Andromeda galaxy, which is similar to that of the Triangulum galaxy? Or could it be due to the composition of its galactic bulge? At the heart of this galaxy, X-rays emanate from two very different sources. Indeed, it is a high-mass binary system composed on the one hand of a wolf riot star, namely a hot star of several tens of solar masses and a compact object. The latter is none other than a stellar black hole. It is even one of the most massive known. It would contain several tens of solar masses. Another member of the local group arouses our curiosity. It is the irregular dwarf galaxy Cetus, also named IC1613, or Caldwell 51. 
located in the constellation of the Whale, also called the constellation of Cetus, and distant 2.4 million light years from our Milky Way, it contains nearly 100 million stars, including several specimens of Cepheid variable stars that allow us to define cosmic distances. Most of these stars were formed about 7 billion years ago. But today, it seems that this galaxy is at rest. Unlike other irregular dwarf galaxies of the local group that are still very active, Caldwell 51 does not seem to produce any stars anymore. Its discovery by the German astrophotographer Max Wolf dates back to 1906. Despite its relative proximity, it is a galactic object that appears only as a particularly faint and diffuse spot. Even when observed through a medium-sized telescope, its apparent magnitude being only 9.9. .9. On the other hand, its observation is not diminished by cosmic dust. Therefore, the variable stars it hosts can be studied at length and accurate distance measurements can be made. At first glance, Caldwell 51 appears to be a simple, irregularly shaped galaxy without a star disk. However, this galactic object that is approaching us at a speed of 234 kilometers per second, or 145 miles per second, is far from being ordinary. Indeed, this galaxy has behaved like a real house fairy. Unlike many galaxies, it contains only a very small amount of dust. Moreover, the line of sight is also clear. It is thus offered to astronomers without any filter. They are then able to observe in detail its Cepheid stars and its variable stars of the RR Lyra type these red giants whose size and brightness increase periodically. Caldwell 51 has thus played a very important role in the estimation of distances. But how can this be explained? The so-called variable stars experience periodic variations in their luminosity, which are related to their intrinsic luminosity, i.e. their own luminosity. By measuring the periodicities of stars, astronomers are able to define the proper luminosity of each star. By comparing these values to the apparent brightness of each star, scientists are then able to determine the distance at which they appear the least bright. These stars, considered as standard candles, have allowed astronomers to develop a scale of cosmic distances. This is how they are able to evaluate the distance at which a large number of objects in the universe evolve. But not all galaxies are as serene as Caldwell 51. This is particularly true of the Phoenix Dwarf Galaxy, or PGC 6830, a structure 1.3 million light years away from Earth and located in the constellation Phoenix. This galaxy, which was discovered only in 1976 by Hans Emil Schuster and Richard Martin West, was at first mistaken for a globular cluster, like many irregular dwarf galaxies. However, from the first observations of this small galaxy, it showed such characteristics that it defied the rules of the usual classification. The youngest stars are visible in its inner regions. These extend in an east to west direction. The older stars are mainly located on the periphery in the so-called outer regions, but these extend along a different axis, namely north to south. Nevertheless, it does not fit into the category of dwarf spheroidal galaxies because it does not contain enough gas to allow the formation of new stars, even if the rate of star formation in its central region seems to have been relatively regular during its evolution. The galactic object has certainly been shaken by supernova explosions on many occasions. Indeed, a gas cloud of about 10 solar masses is observed 
near the galaxy just to the west. This cloud has probably been ejected after having undergone successive supernova explosions during the formation of stars as shown by the presence of relatively young stars. This H1 region, which is composed among other things of neutral atomic hydrogen, although it is not implanted in the heart of the galaxy, is nevertheless gravitationally linked to it and will inexorably end up falling back inside. But now, let's look at a proven spheroidal dwarf galaxy of the local group. Let's look at the Toucan Dwarf Galaxy, which is 2.8 million light years away from the Milky Way, but which, in addition to being an isolated member, is almost the opposite of most other galaxies from the Milky Way. It is composed only of very old stars, which were created during a single period of formation, the same as that of our Milky Way and its globular clusters. The dispersal speed of the Toucan Galaxy is 15.4 kilometers per second, or 9.5 miles per second, at the center, while its rotation speed is 16 kilometers per second, or 10 miles per second, in its outer regions. In addition to spinning relentlessly on itself, it is moving further and further away from us, as evidenced by its radial velocity of 194 kilometers per second, or 120 miles per second, relative to the Sun. Similarly, the Toucan Galaxy is moving away from the center of the Milky Way at 98.9 kilometers per second, or 61.5 miles per second. Its discovery dates only from 1990, but because of its isolation, it is, since then, the object of many observations. It is the second most distant galaxy of all the local group galaxies, after the irregular dwarf Sagittarius. Located near the edge of the local group, it is 3.6 million light years away from its Berry Center. It is also one of only two dwarf spheroidal galaxies in the local group that are not close to the Milky Way or the Andromeda Galaxy. The Toucan Dwarf Galaxy has probably always evolved on its own, without the gravitational forces of other members. Thus, it can help scientists to go back in time and perhaps one day understand the kinematics and formation history of the local group, in addition to assessing the role of the environment in the evolution of dwarf galaxies. In the category of isolated galaxies, the wolf lundmark Melot Irregular Dwarf Galaxy, also referred to as WLM, is also being studied for having preserved a chemical composition very close to the early universe. This galaxy, which is located in the constellation of the Whale, is 3 million light years from our Sun. Its maximum size is 8,000 light years, and its luminosity is slightly higher than the average globular cluster. In its neighborhood, we find the galaxy IC1630 at a distance of 1 million light years. It was first observed in 1909, but it is in 1926 that it joined the long list of known galaxies instead of a globular cluster. Some of its stars of low mass are considered primitive. Among its countless sources of light are stars that began to form more than 12 billion years ago. Half of them are more than 9 billion years old. A strong slowdown followed before resuming 1 to 2.5 billion years ago. In its peripheral halo, we can see a large number of old red stars whose age goes back to the formation of the galaxy. On the contrary, the more central stars are young blue stars. Its elongated morphology, its relatively isolated location at the edge of the local group, and the characteristics and size of its stars suggest 
that WLM has never interacted with any other galaxy in the local group, nor with any other cosmic object. On the other hand, disparities have been discovered concerning the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere of some supergiant stars. This would be up to five times higher than the oxygen level detected in the surrounding interstellar medium. This difference in oxygen concentration, but also in iron, is reminiscent of similar anomalies that have already been studied in the Barnard Galaxy, or the Small Magellanic Cloud. Everything suggests that these galaxies, although independent of each other, have experienced an identical stellar evolution. Of course, not all the galaxies of the local group have followed the same process. This is notably the case for the Leo A galaxy, also known as Leo 3. This irregular dwarf galaxy evolves at 2.54 million light years from our solar system, towards the constellation of Leo. It extends over about 10,000 light years and has a mass of about 80 million solar masses, 80% of which is dark matter. For scientists, it turns out to be a rather unusual galaxy. It has no obvious structural features, is composed of a mass of stars of approximately spherical shape, and is one of the most isolated galaxies of the local group. It shows no signs of distant let alone recent merger, or interaction with any of its few neighbors. However, Leo A is one of the few irregular galaxies in which nearly 90% of its star population is less than 8 billion years old. Its relatively massive content, with a predominance of young stars, corresponds to the standards we know. Indeed, Young stars are usually the result of a recent interaction with another galaxy. Moreover, it harbors variable stars of the RR, Lyrae type, which indicates that the galaxy also contains a stellar population 10 billion years old. Thus, the evolutionary history of this galaxy is unusual to say the least. Its star formation period did not follow a classical timescale compared to its compatriots. Once again, this galaxy, with its banal appearances, while integrating the category of somewhat intriguing objects, raises new questions. As you can see, there is no lack of galaxies in the universe. We could still visit dozens in the local group and thousands beyond this part of space. How about turning our attention to other cosmic objects or atypical events? I propose that you join a dwarf galaxy of the local group, located in the constellations of the Dorado and the Table, the Large Magellanic Cloud. This galaxy was very recently in the spotlight because of an impromptu phenomenon that by chance was immortalized by the Hubble telescope. This is LMC N49, a supernova afterglow. Located 160,000 light years away, it is what remains after the explosion of a star that occurred about 5,000 years ago. Like a spider's web, the luminous filaments that it displays extend over a diameter of 75 light years. At the end of its life, the star involved first ejected gas before literally exploding. The generated shock wave pressed through the surrounding gas at a speed of almost 300 kilometers per second, or 190 miles per second. The passage of this shock wave heated the gas filaments to a million degrees, hence their luminosity. If other afterglows have already been observed, LMC N49 is very particular. It is the first time that an afterglow behaves in this way, taking the shape of a water droplet filled with filamentary structures. Usually, slugs are shaped like large uniform bubbles, 
But another point in particular attracts the scientists. Indeed, the middle of this luminous cluster of gas, a neutron star has been detected. This type of star, which appears following the gravitational collapse of a massive star during a supernova, is not surprising. However, this one is particularly dense, with a mass close to that of our Sun, while its diameter is only a few kilometers. In addition, this star has an intense activity and a rapid rotation speed, which places it in the category of pulsars. This type of cataclysmic thermonuclear explosion, which occurs when a star runs out of fuel, is as short as it is spectacular. However, it is necessary to look at the right place and at the right time. If it is very complicated to observe such an event, on the other hand, the afterglow, i.e. the clouds of dust and superheated gas, persist for thousands of years. Even if they are much less luminous and spectacular than the supernova itself, they are still wonderful. But above all, they allow astronomers to collect essential data. They can study the life cycle of stars. Such an afterglow, which is full of information about the interactions between clouds and the interstellar medium, offers an additional opportunity for astronomers to understand a little more about the global dynamics of the universe. But let's stay in this region of the local group. The Magellanic Clouds, which are remarkable objects, turn out to be associated with an extraordinary and sometimes disconcerting phenomenon. It is about high-speed clouds, especially the Magellanic Current. Indeed, supernovas are not the only cosmic events that induce significant speeds of movement of different elements. We find high-speed clouds in the galactic halo of some galaxies, they are composed of a large mass of interstellar gas. Some are particularly massive, sometimes reaching several million times the mass of the Sun, and spread over great distances. Their particularity is that they move at speeds very different from the rotation of the disk of their galaxy, up to several hundred kilometers per second. The origin of these clouds, even if it is the subject of much research, could be explained by several theories. Indeed, some high-speed clouds have much lower metallicities than those found in their host galaxy, which suggests that they were originally part of another galactic object, probably a little too close. Other high-velocity clouds, on the other hand, contain heavy elements, including significant amounts of iron, suggesting that they were probably ejected outside the galaxy perhaps during explosive supernovas. But what about the Magellanic Current that stretches long around the Milky Way at a distance of 180,000 light years? Discovered in 1965, it immediately intrigued astronomers because of its abnormally high speed, and for good reason. This structure, composed of interstellar clouds that extend over our celestial sphere for nearly 230 degrees, has a speed of about 400 kilometers per second, or 250 miles per second. This huge column of unionized hydrogen is the second largest structure to be observed from Earth, after our Milky Way. The Magellanic Current is so vast that more than 40 years of observation using the largest radio telescopes have been necessary to finally unravel the mysteries surrounding this structure. A study published in 2015 managed to characterize the physical mechanisms of its formation and as a result revealed its origins. Scientists discovered that the Magellanic Current is composed of two huge filaments of gas, each of which escapes from one of the two Magellanic clouds these filaments are hurtling at nearly a million kilometers per hour or 620,000 miles per hour towards the Milky Way and its halo of heated gas, while following the trajectory of their clouds, along with gigantic vortices, 
reminiscent of the smoke wisps escaping from a large cigar. The closer these clouds get to the Milky Way, the more the pressure of the halo, whose gas temperature reaches the million degrees, pushes them back into space. In addition, a colossal amount of small gas bubbles literally fall into our galaxy. These result from an ancient shock between the two Magellanic clouds, which seems to have occurred about 250 million years ago, the same shock that induced the bridge of matter connecting the two clouds. Simulations have shown that the Magellanic current probably formed in two phases. At first, while the Magellanic clouds were still relatively distant from our galaxy, the larger of the two would have pumped gas from the smaller. Then, when these two galaxies began to fall into ours, their respective galactic crowns would have been deprived of a fifth of their mass to the benefit of the Magellanic current. Subsequently, this current, impacted by gravity, would have stretched until it formed the gigantic arc that we know today. This model, in addition to explaining the filamentary form of the current, allows us to better understand why it is entirely devoid of stars. In a much more distant part of the cosmos, not far from the Triangulum Galaxy, another high-speed cloud has been discovered. Located 2.28 million light-years from the Milky Way, in the constellation of Pisces, it is the high-velocity cloud HVC 127 41 330. This name, which has nothing poetic about it, takes the three numbers corresponding respectively to its galactic longitude and latitude, as well as its radial speed. It is characterized by a halo of dark matter, within which a disk of baryonic gas and dust, relatively dense, remains trapped. This cloud, which is a concentrate of intergalactic hydrogen, is probably in gravitational interaction with the Pisces Dwarf Galaxy which it borders. Consisting essentially of neutral atomic hydrogen, it is therefore what is called an H1 region. In this structure, which is nevertheless 20,000 light years wide, no star has yet been detected. What if it were a dark galaxy? If so, it would be the first one found in the local group. The appearance of dark galaxies would date from the first billions of years of the universe. They would correspond to one of the very first stages of formation of the luminous galaxies that we know. Their composition, whose ratio of baryonic matter mass to dark matter mass, is particularly low, ranging from 0.1 to 0.15, according to the models, does not allow them to produce stars yet only very slowly. As a result, they are totally obscure, which makes them so difficult to detect. According to some experts, it would take them more than 100 billion years to transform all their interstellar matter into stars and thus become low surface brightness galaxies with a mass luminosity ratio tending towards infinity. For some scientists, the universe must have been mainly occupied by this type of dark galaxies in the beginning. The study of these dark objects should allow us to understand the process of formation of present-day galaxies. But how to locate them? In 2012, a team of researchers from the European Southern Observatory announced they had found a way. They need to shine an extremely bright light where they assume a dark galaxy exists. Then, they look for the fluorescent envelope of gas belonging to the dark galaxy when illuminated by ultraviolet light from a nearby quasar. As a result, the light from the quasar is projected onto the dark galaxy, which becomes illuminated, as would a white garment receiving the rays of an ultraviolet lamp in a nightclub. As you can see, Astronomers do not only observe luminous or massive objects, and each cosmic parcel plays a role in our understanding of the universe.
I propose you now to find some luminosity. Let's go to the galaxy NGC 2663, a typical elliptical galaxy, located in the constellation of the Compass, about 100 light years away from the Milky Way. While the galaxy itself has been known since 1886, many of its properties remain mysterious until a group of astronomers conducted a multi-wavelength study to reveal the exact nature of this object. By combining data at several wavelengths, such as radio observations and X-ray data collected from different observing centers around the world, they were able to affirm very shortly ago, in 2022, that it is an oval-shaped elliptical galaxy. This other galaxy of the local group, in addition to being large and massive with a stellar mass of approximately 580 billion solar masses, has surprised, not to say shocked, scientists. Indeed, radio waves have revealed that this galaxy emits two prodigiously long radio jets, which follow diametrically opposed trajectories. But what is most extraordinary is that they extend with a speed close to that of light, over nearly 1,150 light years. This jet stream, which is expelled with colossal energy from the supermassive black hole located in the galactic bulb, is 50 times larger than the galaxy itself. To give you a comparison, if it were visible to the naked eye from our solar system, this jet of matter would appear larger than the moon in our sky vault. These characteristics make this galaxy, long considered as trivial, one of the largest radio galaxies in projected angular size of our proximal universe. To continue our journey, I now propose to discover a giant galaxy, Perseus A, also known as NGC 1275. This galaxy is the predominant member of the Perseus Galaxy Cluster. It is located in the constellation of the same name, and its distance is estimated at 246 million light years from our Sun. It is one of the cosmic objects that deserve all the attention of astronomers, on the one hand, for its frail structure in reddish lace that surrounds its luminous bulb, and on the other hand, for its activity that gives it the air of a magnetic monster. It is indeed an active galaxy of the Seifert II type. We can admire the disk of this lenticular galaxy, as well as its extremely bright and compact core, where a supermassive black hole is active. The mass of the latter is about 340 million solar masses. This type of core represents one of the largest sources of electromagnetic radiation in the universe. The galaxy contains nearly 13 billion solar masses of molecular hydrogen. This probably comes from the intergalactic medium of the Perseus cluster. This molecular hydrogen, colder, feeds the active core of the Perseus A galaxy, hence its production of stars at a frantic pace. Careful observation of this galactic monster, which has dimensions close to 230,000 light years, shows that it is in fact composed of two members, namely two galaxies. The main galaxy is accompanied by a galaxy called HVS, or High Velocity System, which approaches the first at the speed of 3,000 kilometers per second, or 1,860 miles per second. Although distant from each other by at least 200,000 light years, the HVS galaxy is destined to merge with Perseus A. The tidal force produced by the main galaxy as well as the dynamic pressure undergone during the displacement of this HVS galaxy in the intracluster medium of Perseus, progressively strips it of its gas, while favoring in an intense way the formation of stars in the latter. Perseus A, which is the predominant member of the Perseus cluster, also called the NGC 1275 group, is located in the center of the cluster. Moreover, 
it is the brightest of all the galaxies in this group. These characteristics are often found in the center of galaxy clusters. A team of astronomers suggests that several thousands of compact and massive star clusters have formed due to the surrounding gas cooled during the last billion years at least, equivalent to 5,000 to 3 million solar masses. The center of galaxy clusters, fed by abundant star clusters in their environment, thus gains luminosity over cosmic time. When observing Perseus A, you can only admire its massive network of reddish luminous filaments emanating from gas heated to several million degrees. These long filaments, whose mass of contained gas, reaches in each of them, about 1,500,000 solar masses extend well beyond the galaxy. As a source of X-rays, they are only 200 light years thick, but driven by plasma bubbles from the active nucleus of the galaxy, they can reach up to 200,000 light years in length. Despite a high temperature of nearly 55 million degrees Celsius or 99 million degrees Fahrenheit of the surrounding gas, these long filaments remain cooler than the intergalactic medium in which they stagnate. They do not appear to dissipate or collapse to form stars. Their long-lasting existence could be explained by the presence of weak extragalactic magnetic fields, which would then be just sufficient to hold together the ions of the filaments while protecting them from a collapse resulting either from gravitational forces or from the violence of the surrounding cluster during their lifetime, estimated at 100 million years. Exceptional and unexplained phenomena occur frequently in the cosmos. Many go unnoticed but one of them made headlines in 2019. At a distance of about 800 million light years from our solar system, an unknown object was annihilated by a stellar black hole. So far, nothing extraordinary, you may say. However, this cosmic merger generated enough energy to bend space-time and provoke gravitational waves that travel through the cosmos at high speed until they bounced off the cosmic edges of our Earth. Three high-sensitivity detectors measured these disturbances on August 14, 2019, giving this phenomenon the name GW190814. It turns out that for millions if not billions of years, two objects have been orbiting each other, forming an ever-narrower spiral, inevitably leading them to clash. One of these two objects is a black hole with a mass equivalent to 23 solar masses. It had no trouble swallowing the second object, whose compact mass was barely more than 2.6 solar masses. This second object, unknown, leaves the mystery concerning its nature. Was it a neutron star or was it another black hole? In both cases, its mass is surprising and leave scientists in the dark. Indeed, according to our knowledge, a neutron star cannot exist beyond 2.1 solar masses, the majority of them having approximately 1.4 solar masses. This one would have been exceptionally heavy. Moreover, current observations have difficulty in determining if these stars were to exist, what phenomenon could prevent them from collapsing on themselves after such an important increase in mass. Concerning a potential second black hole, the weakest ones detected so far have masses around five solar masses. The latter would have been, therefore, particularly light. The mystery of the nature of the second object will probably never be solved, even if the scientific community is leaning more towards the merger of two black holes of unequal masses. However, this cosmic incident has not said its last word. Indeed, the difference in mass between the two objects involved is fascinating. Until now, 
the observed collisions have always involved pairs of almost similar mass. This ratio of 9 to 1 is unprecedented in the history of astronomy. In addition to opening the way to gravitational tests never before performed, it raises new questions about how binary systems are formed. The cosmos is full of astronomical objects, each more exceptional than the last. We have just discovered some of them, with properties sometimes common, or on the contrary, extraordinary, even disconcerting. We have been traveling through the local group, observing some of its most remarkable galaxies. You have also had the opportunity to visualize the brightest afterglow of the large Magellanic Cloud to encounter high-speed clouds, to get acquainted with a hypothetical dark galaxy, or to observe a pulsar and a gigantic black hole jet. You have just discovered the main extragalactic object studied by scientists. However, you are not yet at the end of your surprises. I am now taking you 5 billion light years away to a remote part of the cosmos where we will explore a quasar like you have probably never seen before. But before we get there, let's start by taking a look at this type of object. First of all, what is a quasar? A quasar, or quasi-stellar astronomical radiation source, is a supermassive black hole located at the center of an incredibly luminous region corresponding to the active nucleus of a galaxy. It is considered by expert astronomers to be the most luminous star in the universe. It is therefore a celestial body that is powered by a supermassive black hole, that is, billions of times more massive than our Sun. However, not all galaxies with a black hole have a quasar. This corresponds to the compact region surrounding the black hole, contained in a massive galaxy. When this celestial material gets too close to the black hole, it creates an accretion disk containing huge quantities of gas, whose temperature rises to millions of degrees, hence the intense radiation that we know. Scientists believe that quasars were much more numerous 10 to 9 billion years ago, they also found that these objects had very different variabilities from each other. If their lifetimes are diverse, the activity they generate also varies greatly over very short periods of days or even hours. Finally, the only common point that quasars have is their power of emission, despite their small size. They are considered as the most active of the active galactic nuclei, namely the AGN for active galaxy nucleus. For a black hole to be considered a quasar, it must ingest at least one solar type star per day. This overflowing activity seems to be due to the concentration of matter around the black hole, allowing it to gorge itself continuously and for a long time on abundant food. The gas, powerfully impacted by the gravitational influence of the black hole, undergoes accelerations close to the speed of light, thus generating intense magnetic fields accompanied by a gigantic radiation. This phenomenon is additional. The more matter the black hole absorbs, the more its increasing gravity allows it to attract more mass, while the accretion disk rotates faster and faster. The matter of the latter, fed by the mergers of stars and their tearing, when they are about to be absorbed, is thus heated intensely by this accelerated rotation. This is what generates the important source of the observed radiations. The expansion of the universe probably explains why quasars are less numerous now. The stars, which are less densely distributed at present, are experiencing fewer collisions, and as a result, food is running out. It is assumed that many galaxies were once quasars, the most massive ones having certainly experienced this phase for about 10 million years up to 100 million years at most.
What if I were to propose to you to witness not the cataclysmic fusion between two cosmic objects, but the birth of a galaxy? If the scientific community has always wondered which of the black hole and the galaxy appeared first, it may have found the beginning of an answer by observing a naked quasar, i.e., one without any galaxy. The quasar HE0450-2958 Discovered in 2005 by a team from the University of Liège in Belgium, this very particular quasar, located more than 3 billion light-years from Earth, has caught the attention of scientists. The observation of this quasi-star, or QSO, for quasi-stellar objects, revealed a central region so bright that it apparently eclipsed its surrounding galaxy. Assuming that the possible galaxy of this intensely luminous object could be obscured by large amounts of dust, as is often the case, the astrophysicists then scanned it with a mid-infrared spectrometer and imager, VSER, installed at the European Space Observatory. They also combined their data with new images obtained with the Hubble Space Telescope in the near infrared. However, against all expectations, no dust cloud was detected, and despite a thorough study of this luminous object, no host galaxy was detected. Because of the total absence of stars in its surrounding area, this object has been nicknamed the Naked Quasar. What scientists did discover, however, was that a galaxy relatively close to this quasar, only 22,000 light years away, was a veritable nursery, producing stars at a rapid rate. This companion galaxy, extremely rich in very young stars, happens to be located right in the viewfinder of one of the powerful quasar jets. It produces nearly 350 suns per year, which is a hundred times faster than any typical galaxy in our local universe. But the rest of their observations are just as surprising. Indeed, the scientists have, in addition, spotted a bridge of matter that connects the quasar to its neighboring galaxy. The matter and energy flowing from the quasar black hole falls at high speed towards the galaxy. This scenario suggests that the quasar is therefore at the origin of this extraordinary star formation. This companion galaxy probably appeared after an ordinary cloud of gas was hit by the highly energetic particle jet emanating from the quasar. But where does all this energy come from? Scientists have obviously been looking into this troubling question. To explain the power of this quasar, they propose the following idea the black hole would be fed by abundant intergalactic gas filaments. Like any cosmic object, this quasar is continuously moving in the cosmos. With a speed of a few tens of thousands of kilometers per hour, it will inexorably end up merging with this young galaxy. Thus, whether it is really naked or not, it will inevitably, in a more or less distant future, be enveloped by the billions of stars that it currently generates. These observations call into question the understanding that scientists had of this type of system. If we potentially consider this exceptional phenomenon as a missing link, we can then better understand why the mass of black holes is more important in galaxies that have the largest number of stars Future observations aided by new generations of even more precise instruments will be turned to similar objects even further away. Perhaps one day, we will be able to reveal the link between the formation of supermassive black holes and the formation of galaxies in the deep universe. Here we are at the end of our incredible journey beyond the Milky Way. As we have traveled billions of light years, you have had the opportunity to see cosmic wonders that defy imagination. You have witnessed the beauty and complexity of the universe, as well as extreme cosmic events that sometimes shake the cosmos, even 
reaching the edges of our solar system. You have even touched, it seems, the gestation of a galaxy, reminding you how everything seems as magical as it is unexplained. Inspired by the intensity and majesty of these phenomena, you take the minute measure of our place in the universe, realizing how much it remains excessively complex and enigmatic. Astrophysicists, even if they manage to pierce certain mysteries, are perpetually confronted with new questions. Technological innovations, if they allow the observation of cosmic objects more and more distant, as well as they deliver precisions never reached before, certainly still reserve us many surprises. Will the tools of tomorrow allow us one day to understand all the workings of the cosmos? from the occurrence of the Big Bang to the future evolution of our universe? No one can answer these existential questions. What is certain is that the need to understand, the stakes of the space conquest, or the coveted planetary explorations are subjects that excite the scientific community and galvanize a large number of enthusiasts. What about you? What is the desire that drives you the most?